So the calls have slowed down. Can't seem to keep enough work coming in. And even Google isn't coming through for you. So what is your next step? What is your strategy? Hey guys, Pete here, HVAC Greatness coming to you once again. This one's going to be a little brief. I'm a little behind. Um, we've been working on a new program. I'll, I'll leak into that a little bit, but this is really about you, okay? I want you to understand what's happening here. We've been talking about this for a long time. I'm starting to feel it, or I should say my customers that I'm working with are starting to feel it. I work with companies all over the country, including Canada, and the phones just aren't ringing. Google's getting their money, but are you getting yours? I had a customer just this morning talking about the money he's spending on Google, but he's just not getting the leads in. Maybe in your market, you're not feeling this yet, but it's coming. You see, when you have a global or a national um, transition that's happening, certain pockets will fill it first, others will fill it later. But we're going through the beginnings of some of the toughest times that are to come. What's going to happen is the leads are going to start coming in a little slower. People are going to have to spend more money on advertising, but some pockets are deeper than others. How much money do you have on, uh, to be spending on advertising versus let's say some of the more established companies in town that have been around a while. What about these private equity groups that have come in and bought up some heating and air companies and maybe they're not as good as running the business, but they've got a lot of money and they can do a lot of advertising. What are you going to do to offset that? This is why I've been preaching this for the longest. We've got to get a strategy, guys. And by strategy, I don't mean just old school. Let's do preventive maintenance agreements, which, by the way, you still want to do. Or let's set up a marketing campaign and uh, hire a professional digital agency, which, by the way, you still need to do, uh, or at least have a good uh, marketing strategy in place for the key areas for your demographic. In other words, you advertise where your customers are going, not where they're not. So you don't want to go advertising in the nickel dime saver if your customers are high-end customers. That makes sense. So as we lead into this conversation just a little bit, I want to explain to you why. I want to explain to you the reality of your customers right now. And this is a bit of a spectrum, okay? From one end, you know, we've got people with a lot of money. From the other end, we have people that are literally just getting by. We have seen the numbers start to come in. We know that inflation is is on the rise. We know that even the governments are dishonest on how they report because they keep redefining the definition of unemployment or they keep redefining the definition of inflation and how they me measure that metric. So ultimately, we don't know where we are. Are we in a recession? Are we on the beginnings of a depression? Uh, we just don't know because they won't share the truth of the data with us, but all the signs are there. Uh, the banks, the, the these major, I think it was Yellow Truck, they're, they're getting ready to liquidate. Um, so all of this, you know, with the freight, uh, fuel, all this stuff is going to start to be affected, food, distribution. And I heard a financial guru uh, the other day talk about, man, you know, if you have a small business, you're in trouble. He said, unless you're like a plumber or something like that, uh, you're, you, you're in trouble. And I really liked hearing that because HVAC is very much like plumbing, isn't it? And that it's considered, we found that out during the uh, pandemic, it is considered essential services. So even when everything else was shut down, they needed you. And you got to, uh, a lot of companies made more money during that time than they did during regular times. And they've done the stimulus and they've, there's a lot of stuff going, a lot of moving parts. But what is the reality of your customers? And this is what really we need to be focused on. I think the latest number was over 20,000 vehicles being repossessed per day. I thought it was per week, per day. Oh, my gosh. And we're hearing places like Disney. 
uh, Disney World, where they just can't keep enough people there to be profitable. Um, so they're at risk. People, they don't have that extra discretionary income um, to be able to go out and do the things that they've been doing in the past. Now, a lot of people still do. I have a customer in Las Vegas, for example, and he says, we're really not feeling it. People are still coming in and they're still gambling. Well, you know, gambling is a bit of a vice, though. I question that one uh, as to uh, how long that's going to last. But at any rate, we're starting to see that slide. Commercial property is going to have a big impact, okay? There's going to be a lot of surplus inventory out there. And what are you going to do with that property, right? Do you, do you convert it to homes if nobody wants to buy it? Um, that's one strategy, but it's pretty expensive. I doubt that's where it's going to go. So we're going to have a lot of commercial property just sitting out there that nobody can sell. Nobody wants to buy. Um, nobody's going to pay for. We're going to see a, an adjustment on, on residential property values too. I've heard that we're going to have a drop as much as 30% on, on, on these the value of homes and things like this. And so we're getting ready to go for a very interesting ride. Um, your customers, their mindsets are changing. Their priorities are changing. And we've seen these HVAC businesses built around the most profitable element in our industry. And that's the residential replacement. Uh, the GP margins on those are among the best. Like commercial change outs, you know, rooftops, resetting a new rooftop, that that's that's actually better. But you know, how common are those? Residentially, they're very common and they built these heating and air conditioning machines that just continue to produce uh, leads and then do change outs. And as a result, we've seen some companies take and put people in position of technician that perhaps they weren't as good, much of a technician as they were a salesperson, right? So we, we've seen that trend come. And as a result, we've seen companies, honest companies come out there who they, they, they want to grow. They, they, they want to make money, but they don't want, they're not going to lie. And they're not going to, they're not going to uh, mislead in order to make a sale. And they're coming behind some of these companies and, when they step up and they say, well, actually I can fix it, fix this. And no, it's not time to replace it yet. You can get at least another five or 10 years out of this. They're considered the hero. And so that, that boosts uh, some loyalty, but let me, let me remind you that your customer's loyalty in the moment is very high, but it drops exponentially as time passes on from the moment you walk out that door 20 minutes later, they've pretty much forgotten about you. And so that loyalty does fall off. So what does this mean? If, if, if your loyalty can't keep your customers um, connected to you, and if these other companies, as times get tougher and the leads are starting to get to become fewer and fewer, what is that going to mean in terms of the advertising that's going to be taking place in your market, the marketing, how is that going to, going to turn out? Um, one piece I did forget to mention was in one of our mastermind groups. Um, I can't, I forget who it was, but one of the guys had the, the, their rep come in from the manufacturer, the heating and air conditioning manufacturer. And I can't remember which brand it was, but the brand, their production was down over 20%. Um, not because they couldn't get materials or because um, there was there was something else. It was because demand was down. And most manufacturer you, manufacturers use a process called just in time. Uh, it's, it's, it's manufacturing as well as delivery, so that they don't they're not sitting on a bunch of inventory because that's very expensive for them, and they they watch their money very closely. But the point is, they are not making as much equipment as they have because people are pulling back from replacement and they're opting to repair instead. That's a key point. I hope you caught that. People are beginning to pull away from replacement, replacing their heating and air conditioning system. And instead they're opting to repair. Now, what are your margins in replacement? 
what is your GP per man hour or crew hour? And what are your margins in service? What is your GP per man hour? GP is gross profit. And it, when you start to look at how much money is being produced by the hour, because guys, everything's by the hour. I know we got away from by the hour and went to flat rate, but ultimately your ability to earn income is directly connected to man hours. And therefore it's really important to consider that when we're, when we're, when we're analyzing those things. So, because we have to keep our team busy, we have to keep them profitable. We have to keep them, I'm sorry, we have to keep them billable, productive. Right. And so that's, that's, uh, that's a key point, but where, where are you making the money? And, Generally, it's over an installation. And so we've seen service prices come up substantially, and we're seeing some really interesting numbers over on the service side. But, you know, what do you do if the installation, your installation capacity, let's say it's set back by, by 20%, and now you're billing 20% less, just like the manufacturing is. Or maybe in the near future, maybe it's down to 50%. Maybe you're doing half the replacements you used to do. What is that going to do to your financially? Can you recoup that that gross profit? Which, by the way, your not just your net profit is in there is in there, but your your overhead is built into that as well. Your ability to pay the rent, to pay your salary, and your internal staff, and you know, insurance, and cell phones, and marketing, and advertising, all the, all this other stuff is 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 part of that. What are you going to do when you don't have enough of that money coming from that side? Can you make it up on the other side, or where do you look to make it up? Or do we just need to pull back and create a new strategy? I'm suggesting that the old business model is is going to be it's 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 going to have to evolve. I don't want to I don't want to say it's not good because it it the business models are based on consumer um, activities, consumer what they respond to, consumer mindset, consumers' um, way of of behaving, consumer behavior. That was the word I was looking for. And so when we look at that, behavior is changing. They're not acting the same way. It's already starting to happen. Now, we've always had people that are, I hate to say this in a negative connotation, but they're, they poor mouth. They, 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 they speak to, they can't afford this and that, and this, that, and the other. And basically it's a squeaky wheel that, that basically they're looking for you to lubricate with a lower price. So they're they're basically just trying to get you to charge less money. And I think we're all a little guilty of that, or we have been in the past, depending on who we're talking to, because they feel like they're at your mercy, right? So they have to have to do that. So how do we fix these things? You know, should we fix these things? And um it is my opinion that you absolutely better be fixing this stuff. You you absolutely better be putting a strategy in, and you absolutely need be need to take into account the fact that the high-end customers, the customers that want your best services, that will pay your prices, that group, while it's getting smaller and smaller, it's also, it's changing as well because while we little people have little money problems, the big people have big money problems. And all of a sudden, they change. Now, they still may want your very best, but they may want to shop you and make sure that they're getting the best invest return on that investment. So if that makes sense. So guys, just putting heating and air on the side of your van and going down the road is not going to be good enough anymore. It's not going to cut it. You need to save more. And so the whole process with HVAC greatness was how this began years ago. How is it that I do this really, really great work and the customer just, and I explain it logically. We do a load calculation. We 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 look the, at the performance data on the equipment. We apply it to your situation. We understand. We build and design a system around this particular structure, this home, this particular part of the country, the orientation of the house, the, all the different things. We really did a good job, and we would design a system that was so much better. But yet, they would tend to follow price down this dark path of, well, the other company is basically putting the same equipment in for less money. So I got to go with them. And what they're saying is 
their values on the equipment, not on you. And so how, you know, how, if we're greater, how do we communicate that? And so that is not a single task um, response. It's not something that you just flip one switch and all of a sudden this is fixed. It, it's it's multifaceted and it it has to permeate your organization. And so while this gets a little nerdy and it gets a little techy, um, I'm here to tell you, you better evolve or you're going to die. Quote, unquote, you know what I mean? Evolve or die, which means that your business is going to step up and deal with this or it's not going to be here at some point in the future. A lot of businesses are going to go under because you're going to have the big companies on the high end who have way more money and they're going to out advertise you. Then you have the, the small weekend warriors on the, on the bottom end. They don't have licenses. Heck, they may be, you know, they, they worked in maintenance in one other, in other areas that no longer is there. Now everybody's filling in just trying to make their, make money. I too can do heating there. I'll do it. And so that it comes into this handyman uh, army that starts to, to feed at the bottom of your customer base. And, you know, it's going to take some people getting burned before they get the experience that they need in order to um, make a, an informed or an educated decision. We call that your experience-based customer, right? Experience-based customers, your best customers. They're the ones that have, they've been burnt. They're not going to deal with a hack, but They've been, they've dealt with these big companies too. They're all sell, sell, sells. They're not going to deal with that. They're looking for somebody in the middle, but how do you allow them to perceive that when they see you and how do they see you? First of all, they see you with your trucks going down the road. They see you with the advertisements you put throughout the website, uh, throughout the internet, and then they see you on your website. And so what do these messages say? What could they say? What should they say that is going to attract the right kind of customer? And I'm here to tell you the biggest emotional response. And by the way, all people respond to emotion is money. And so we're going to see a race to the bottom. And if you get involved in that, unless you have the, if, unless you can buy equipment cheaper than everybody else and you pay your people cheaper than everybody else, and you're able to keep your overhead down less than everybody else, and you pay yourself and take less profit than everybody else, you're going to you're, you're going to be out in no time. It, it's 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 not sustainable. That's the new word you're kicking around. Sustainable business. So we want a sustainable business model that that works. And and I'm telling you, we need to make make those steps now. Actually, you should have already been working on this. And this may even require a new identity. When they see your identity, they need to see something that they desire based on their current emotional state because decisions are made subconsciously and they're justified logically, okay, and intellectually. And so you have to have that balance for both. So we've been working on the strategy for a long time. We're doing some rebranding. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you one tip. And um, this is a this is a product tip. Um, our guy in Vegas, I mentioned him already. He decided to do a total rebrand. We're actually, I wish I could show you. We're we're not at the point where you can show you right now. I'm working with an artist, and I know there's some good branding companies out there. Let me just say this: there's marketing companies out there that will get the 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 phone to ring, and there's van wrap companies out there, or logo design and creation that will get the phone to ring. But what they miss is the strategy that you have to put together beforehand so that when you give a certain message and identity and a feel that you're trying to, so that you attract the right type of customer, you have to have that strategy worked out. And that, that's what, that's what the whole HVAC greatness process is about. That's why I've been doing this and I've, I've not been doing these podcasts as regular, and I do apologize, but I ju just haven't had time. I finally found an artist. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you're going to start to see some posts. I'm going to start, put, hopefully, within a little bit of time here, you're going to start to see this. But we're taking, for example, my guy in Vegas, and he, we went through the strategy and everything else, and he decided to be 
of specialists. That was his, that was his strategy is everybody else are generous. Everybody else just does heating and air. But if you want this, you need to call us. And what is that specialty? Well, it was tied very smart to what the government is pushing. They're pushing this low carbon footprint. This They're pushing these green systems. They're pushing, uh, you know, cleaner and sustainable energy systems. And they're incentivizing this with rebates and it's coming to a, you know, to a state near you usually with some types of incentives. And they're, they're trying to push things like natural gas, oil, and other, <coughs> other fossil fuels out. And so that uh, the obvious winner there is the heat pump. And so he went in and, and he's uh, we're working on this and he's got a heat pump identity. That's really cool. And he's the specialist, you know, and, and what this does is puts him not only in a different light, we call this blue ocean theory, by the way, blue ocean strategy. Not only do we take him out of the red ocean of shark infested, bloodied waters of the competition, we sit him over in a cleaner blue ocean where, where life is good and you can catch these big fish. Um, it, 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 it not only puts him over there, but it also raises his credibility because if you go to your doctor your MD, you can pay a certain rate, but if he sends you to a specialist, you know you're going to pay more. It, the, the perception is higher because the quality uh, and the, the the what they get is more, right? It's 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 better, and you, we have customers that they have money and they'll spend it, but they want to make sure they're getting something better, and so product specialization is one strategy, but we're mostly we work on. Uh, other strategies because it's hard to be just a specialist on, you know, 90% gas furnaces or by brand or something like this. Uh, we have to really think this thing through, look at our customers, look at our market, look at our competition and come, come up with a strategy that appeals to the customer mindset. And so the first step is to start there. So there's a whole process of doing this, but my point is if you have a strategy and at the end of, I hate making these up. If, um, if I'm a 59 year old man who needs a pair of glasses, I just bought these, um, uh, that are, um, ideal for computers because I work on a computer all day. And that, uh, is that, is that focal point between close and reading and far away because I have trouble all the way. So when I put my bifocals on, I can't see clearly here. And then you're too close. If I look under here, you know what I'm saying? So, and somebody comes up and they say, you know, for, for people in their late fifties who work on computers all day and their eyes are being affected, we've got these news lenses, right? They, they focus ideally for, for the range that you're working on. They, they cut out all the computer screen um, negative uh, lighting and they do this and they do, you know what I'm saying? So if, if I'm perusing through and I've got this challenge and I see this marketing and it speaks to me, you got my attention, you know, I'm going to pay a little bit more for something like that because I, that's me. And we call this, I mentioned this on prior recordings, dog whistle marketing. When you market this way, no, nobody else can hear it. But that ideal customer can, and they respond. And not only the dog whistle, not only one dog is going to come, all the dogs are going to come that are in, in, the, in the range and they're free to come, they're, they're going to respond to this. Why? Because it, it speaks to them too. So once we identify the ideal customer, we learn to create an identity and a message and everything else. It's more than just a really nice wrap that says heating and air. No, it says something deeper. At the emotional level, they respond to it. This is next level marketing. This is the type of strategies that are going to make heating and air conditioning companies come out of this on top and not tumble down with the others. In fact, they're going to be the uh, the beneficiary of a lot of these companies that are going to go under. Right? They just can't do it anymore. They can't find people. They 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 can't afford to pay the pe the, to, to get the good people. Uh, you know, they train good, uh, they, maybe they train their own and then those people leave them and start their own thing. It's just this constant thing. So this, as I said, it's multifaceted because it's, 
It's uh, it's about an identity that consumers can identify with and they want the right kind of consumers and um, employees or people who are, are your um, associates within your company. They're attracted to this type of thing and it's a culture they want to be a part of. So all this stuff doesn't just happen. This is not by accident. You don't just, you know, hang your shingle one day. I do heating and air and all of a sudden, you know, here comes the money, right? Um, it feels that way. But uh, as you grow, you, turn, you you quickly find out that's just not the case. So um, again, uh, this was a little bit of a brief video, but I wanted to get this message out there. You guys pay attention. Um, reach out to Pete. You know, if you're interested in taking your company and going to this other level, you need to be, you need to be doing this. If you can do it on your own, fine. But if you want to fast forward through this, we put the process together. We're streamlining it now because it, it takes a lot of work putting all this stuff together. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting systems in to, so that it streamlines it. So we move through this quicker, but it, uh, at this point it takes, you know, it takes, it takes a few months to get all this stuff ironed out. And then once we do, we, we, you know, I've got an artist now, that for, um, I won't say much less, considerably less than, let's say, some of the other uh, uh, design companies that are out there that are really popular right now, that uh, you, know, you can save a lot of money that way. And you'll see, we're, we're going to start to show some of these before and after. And, and when you see this, the level of our team's uh, expertise on this, I say our team, it's it's not me, it's, it's, it's uh, who I'm associated with and we're bringing into this space for, of heating and air. We'll probably do plumbers as well. Um, what they bring and then the end result and that it, it's just like, hang on, the phones all of a sudden just start ringing and it's, 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 it's pretty fun to watch, you know, when, when, when you start to feel that, especially when you, when you never believe that this was possible. It's not about that, Pete. No, I'm not going to change my logo or I'm not. That's not what I'm needing. Well, all I need are more leads. I'm telling you, it's not the leads. It's, it's, it's not, I shouldn't say it's not the leads. It's not the quantity of the leads. It is the quality of the leads. And people are cutting back. You know, you're going to start, if you haven't already, you're going to start to feel this and it's not going to feel good. And if you're human, you'll drop your prices. You'll do what you got to do. Um, but if you're, uh, you know, if you're smart and you, and you really put these things together in a way that um, you can implement in your company and set yourself apart, you, you're, you're going to do better. And so this is going to be an interesting ride, guys. Um, this is where are we? First week of August, 2023. I wonder how this ages. I wonder what this looks like a year from now. So I'm not a prophet, although I uh, sound, sound like I act like one sometime, but uh, that's that's not what my intentions are. But my intentions are, hey, I've done this for a long time. I've been in heating and air conditioning over 40 years. You know, I started in 1982. So um, I've been around for a long time. And, you know, I'm here to tell you, I've, I've seen these things happen. And I've also seen other countries and how they do these things. And um, we're starting to move in that direction. I know what that looks like. I've lived in these countries and um, it's, it's way different than what we're used to. So at any rate, hang in there, uh, keep following on the channel, like subscribe, all that good stuff. You know how that works and um, reach out to me at HVAC greatness at gmail.com. If you got any questions or if you just want to hook up and see what we can do for you. But if you make the move now, You'll be prepared for when it gets really tough. If you don't, you won't. P. Ramsey here, HVC Greatness. You guys take care. Bye-bye.